Hello, everybody, and how are you today? I'm Kim, and this is Naturally Kim's Knitting. Um, this is a podcast, oh, about a little bit of everything. I've got some spinning, but I can't show you right now, and knitting, and puppy news, and doggy news. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. Oh, I should tell you, I live here where my podcast is done with my father-in-law, Ronald, my dear, sweet husband, Randy, my kitty cat, Heather, and my puppy, Casper. It's nap time. He and I have been taking naps about this time every day. So anyways, today is November 9th, 2023, and this is episode 312. You can find me online on YouTube, Blogger, Facebook, and WordPress as Naturally Kim's Knitting, and on Ravelry as Napier's Knit and Naturally Kim Knit, Kim's Knitting Podcast Group. And on Instagram, I'm knitting underscore Kim. He's not going to make it. He's a sleepy baby. Um, Maybe. <laughs> we just were outside and we went running, 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 didn't we? Anyways, uh, I am an affiliate with two places. One of them is Knit Picks and the other is Michael's. And any of you who are in the market for shopping for Christmas decor, you should check out Michael's. They have tons of Christmas trees and up to 40% off a lot of their Christmas decor and some other um, decorations and things that are at a good price. And they've also just started something called Maker's Place. They have some really cute handmade gifts that you could make all. Um, yeah, you should go there and check them out. Because let's see, when I was there, they had a standing leather tree. They had a hat, a knit hat. Um, oh, I can't even remember when I was just there. Isn't that horrible? Anyways, it's, a, it's great. Um, if you do decide to shop at Michael's, could you please go to my show notes? and cut and paste the Michaels um, link. <laughs> I've got to hold his head up. Um, paste it, copy and paste it, and go go to their store. And you can, that helps me out and that helps you out. Okay, um, then Knit Picks is my other one. And Knit Picks is having such a great November sale. They're having, they have daily sales which right now they have, sorry, baby, they, they have knitting needles on sale, but then they also have a free project bag with a $75 purchase for this week, and then they have up to 60% off of so many wonderful yarns. I, I promised I wasn't going to buy any more yarns for a long while, because I have ideas of things I want to do. I hope I'm not making you dizzy by swinging, swaying back and forth. It's holding a baby in my arms. What can I say? Um, let's see. Yeah. Anyways, so that's them. Oh, and then the oh, Knit Picks still has their build your your own yarn pack. Save up to t save ten percent off of ten skeins or more. Somehow I did an ed editing mistake and I put zero or more skeins. Should be ten or more. Okay. Now. We did have a craft along, and I did draw the winners, and I notified them. And I heard from Anita. <clears throat> I said her name wrong, I think. Um, but I haven't heard from I know Hour. I know Hour. You've got six days to get in contact with me, okay? Because you won also. And I have craft along. I'm sorry, baby. And you can enter them. You can enter one. You can enter both whatever you might want to do. But right now we are having, oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Right now we're having our finished object craft along, which we always have. Um, so these are for the months of October through November. And all you have to do is finish an object and then go to that thread on Ravelry and enter your picture I'll take a picture, enter your picture, and if it has a name, put a name with the picture, please. <laughs> um, I 
lock that thread on December 1st. And then I, I'm sorry, somebody's distracting me. Um, and then I use random number generator to go through all the entries and it chooses two people. Those two people have um, ten, oh, it's supposed to be 10 days. No, it's been 15 days. So they used to give you two weeks. Um, you, <laughs> the winners have 15 days to contact me and they can tell me if they would prefer to have a $10 Nitpicks gift card, a $10 Michaels gift card, or any giftable pattern valued up to $10. And then as long as the Ukraine war is going on, Myla from Myla's Knit Corner, you can pick one pattern of hers and it will be my gift to you and it will help people. Okay, now, this is the most wonderful time of the year because November and December, starting November 1st, going through December 31st, this is my favorite um, crafting, what do I want to call it? Craft along that we do because this one, if you are into crafting for others, whether it's a gift, whether it's charity, it doesn't matter. If you want to gift, uh, make something and um, enter it in our contest, contest, which is Knitting for Others for November and December, feel free. The object had to be started after November 1st. And of course, ideally, if you're giving it as a gift, it should be done by, you know, you know, I give you till December 31st to enter them. Um, then I lock it on January 1st, the same thing, that's a finished object. Okay, now, let's say you did a finished, let's say you did something for others, and you want to put it in the finished object of Craft Along too. Yes, please, go ahead, do that. The more the merrier. I love it. Um, if you know of anybody else who wants to be in on this, just tell them to join our Ravelry group, and they can do this, and maybe they could get either a $10 gift card or a pattern worth up to $10. It's one pattern, by the way. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, and with, if, if you get Myers, Myers, Michaels, or Nitpicks gift card, I appreciate it if you use it through my show notes. I do appreciate that. Okay. Sorry, darling. Oh, I should tell you, my show notes are on um, ksnapier475.blogspot.com. Okay, let's see what else. My crafty, craftiness has been basically doing the same thing. I'm hibernating um, Elsie's Afghan until I can get through Christmas at least. I've been having to hide these from puppy. He thinks my knitting is for him. And now I have to feel behind me to see if I got them all. So, I, I decided sometime in October that I wanted to make Barbie clothes for my granddaughter, for her Advent stocking. Then I decided that my grandson is into Pokemon. So we got some pom-poms and we're going to make Pokemon things for my grandson's Advent, possibly. This is my husband's doing. As far as he's gotten with it so far, as he sat in the chair and looked at the directions. Anyways, um, then I was going to make Advent stockings for Elsie. Well, I decided I didn't start it with my other grandkids for, you know, so they were a couple of years in. So I'm going to do the same thing for Elsie. But then I've got all year to make her finger, finger puppets to go in the Advent stocking. So, yeah. But... Okay, now I haven't sewn these together because I've decided I'm going to sew everything together at the same time. Now, if I had the time and if I had two hands, I would put these on the Barbie and show you. But here is a little dress. See the little, it's got sleeveless or spaghetti strap stripes or straps. And that's it, when it's sewed together, it will look better. But. So that's for Barbie. Oh, I just finished this. Oh, this is a skirt. Oh, I love this skirt. It's a swirly skirt. So yay, that was fun. 
you know how I came across these? I went on to Pinterest and typed in knitted Barbie clothes, I believe. And somebody has all these free patterns. Okay, this one is a dress. I'm sorry, you do have to use some imagination because they are not sewn together yet. But this one is a dress. You can tell this I used I've been using up sock yarn. Pants. I tell you. I swore I'm never going to make another pair of Barbie pants. I don't know. Because when you, you know, you can't say things like that. Because then something comes up. Um, this is another Barbie dress. This must have been one of the first ones I made. <laughs> I know you can't see much of it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm disturbing my dog's nap time. Oh, now this was cute. This is like a cow neck sweater. I'm hoping it's not too big for Barbie. I didn't try it on. But look at that. Isn't that cute? These are the sleeves. Isn't that cute? So, yeah, it's, she may not end up with enough for at every Advent day, but we have other things we can put into. And somebody has kept me from really knitting since Saturday. We've been learning where... Mom has hidden her yarn at, though, because all at once he'll come out and he'll have a ball of, okay, I've been trying to, whenever he comes out with one, I try to get it from him real fast and put it, put it up. I don't necessarily put it away right away because I know he's on the hunt. So, um, aren't you Casper? Oh, my poor sleepy boy. Um, so, yeah, so... Between finding all the things that I thought I put away, but I didn't put away, and uh, finding what's in his mouth that he shouldn't have, we are exhausted about this time every day, the two of us. So usually I'll turn on the TV for some background noise, and we usually sit there and just sleep, the two of us. Because then when he wakes up, you know it's time to be ready to move. <laughs> But he's doing okay. Now, he was, he's about, he was born in the middle of June. And um, the rescue sanctuary that I got him from said that he was with a breeder. And he was too big to go to the pet, pet stores. I'm so glad he was. Um. And she got to them before they were either going to euthanize or put him along the side of the road. My little Casper. Now, he is a full-blooded toy poodle. He is registered with the AKC. Now, let me tell you this. His name to me will always be Casper Snuffy. Because the grandkids wanted to call him Snuffy. And I said, well, I like Casper, so we're going to be Casper. Put Snuffy in the middle. Um, anyways, his registered name is Jean-Claude Diesel, and then whatever his last name was. And uh, I said, no, no, his name is not Jean-Claude Diesel. Although there are times when he is just as tough. That he saw the doctor yesterday. Not so thrilled with that. Well, plus, we drove over an hour to get him, then over an hour to bring him home. And although that had a good ending, he had a seven-year-old Maltese stud that he was the Maltese's shadow. Okay? So when we took him away, he was so sad. And it probably took him half the way up here before he finally took even looked at me real fast. He was looking out the window the rest of the time. Then we got probably another fifteen minutes down fifteen minutes down the road and he came he turned and looked at me and gave me the sweetest eyes. He's got amber eyes and a brown nose. I've never had a dog with amber eyes and a brown nose. You can't see his eyes. Sorry. Um let me see if I can I'm gonna move the camera back. 
here's my boy. Here's my Casper. Now today, I, oh, I'm sorry. Thursdays, I volunteer at the church. Four hours. Randy had to take his dad to a doctor's appointment. Yeah? Oh, I don't know what he did with Casper during that time. Because he called me when he was getting ready to go to work, and he said, do you think I could just put Casper in my mom's house? I said, no. No. <laughs> I said, I will be finding little wet spots and little potty spots all through the house. No. And I said, um, and I didn't want to put him in a crate for four hours. That's mean. So I said, why don't we put him in our kitchen? Yes. We have to make it so that Ronald can um, get into the kitchen because we have two baby beds, baby gates. So the one's easy enough to for us to block off. But the other one, we like to make it so that um, Ronald can get into the kitchen, get something to eat, and all that. Okay, so we lean it. Now, Ginger was terrified of these gates and the noises they made if you knocked him over. Not him. I came home. <laughs> he was dragging a ball of yarn. Pure joy in his face. And because he's gotten something mama's keeping away from him. Mom is putting away yarn as I, as I find it now, and I'm putting away all kinds of things. Anyways, um, yeah, he had knocked the gate down. He ran over it. I'm assuming, well, he had a potty accident in our front room, which I saw first. I walked in the door, and I was looking through our one baby gate. I said, Mommy's home. And in he comes from the family room with the yarn. I went, oh, no. Did Daddy forget? No. Daddy didn't forget. Somebody just outsmarted Daddy. So next time we're going to lean the gate the other way. So that if he jumps against it, which he is a great jumper, one of these days he's going to learn how to jump over those gates. So that, anyway, so if he tries to... Um, jump and knock the gate over. He won't be able to. So, so why haven't I had done a podcast for so long? October was a horrible month. I didn't have a voice for at least two weeks. Okay, um, allergies. Then Ronald started having medical issue after medical issue. And I just, you know, we just couldn't do any, you know, I couldn't think of anything else. And then um, we took Ginger, I'm not going to cry because I am going to cry. We took Ginger to the vet for a regular checkup. Now, she had had a couple accidents in the house over the last six weeks. Didn't know why, but we picked up. She knows better. She was ashamed. Took her to the vet. Sorry. And uh, just like that, he said, well, number one, her, her abdomen is filled with liquid. He goes, but she also has a mask here. And he said it was about the size of a softball. So we needed to make an appointment to bring her in Monday to have surgery on Tuesday. If it was attached to her spleen, no problem. He could take it all back. Okay, remember, it was the size of a softball. We get her there Monday, and I'm noticing over the weekend things I hadn't noticed, or else it was because of the size of the thing. She was having troubles getting comfortable. Laying down, she had to make sure her belly was sideways because of every ginger. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, um, they did surgery. I was at the church, so I make, I make phone calls. Kitty Cat has a cricket toy. Puppy really wants it, but I won't let him have it. So 
guys at the church. I make phone calls for the church when new people are there or whatever. No, I wasn't at the church. They had told me that he would probably be doing surgery at age 30. And if there was anything to be concerned with, he would call me. But they would call me while he was in surgery. Ten minutes after eight, so he started the surgery earlier. I hadn't left for the church yet. I was late because usually no, I wasn't. That was Tuesday. I like to be there about eight thirty, so I can get phone calls done around nine. At ten after eight, he called, and he goes up. The mass is the size of a candle. From the size of a cell phone to the size of a candle, it just stopped again. He said we could remove, but it's on her liver. He goes, we could remove it. However, it's either going to grow back quicker than it did this time, or there's going to be hemorrhaging. I said, no. I cannot do that to my ginger. So we asked him, please, since she's already out, just let her speak. Randy, okay, so Randy was on the phone. His phone would work. And he's, I just broke down. Worse than this, believe it or not. And he came out. He put his arms around me, and we decided what to do with Ginger, with her remains. Because one thought I had had at one time was we would get her ashes and we would scatter them around her favorite places to go. Well, Randy goes, you know where her favorite place was? And we both said the garden. So she's now buried in the garden. Right where she would love to be. <laughs> the north end of the garden is where she always wanted to be. And Randy asked me, because I said something about, I have to have a puppy. Without Ginger, I was crying oh, several times a day. I said, I need to have a puppy. And he goes, well, what do you think your morning time will be? I said, Randy, we were in charge of Molly's dog, Magic, when she went off to college. I still cry for magic. I said, it doesn't matter if it's two days, two weeks, two months, two years. I cry for all of my pets. <laughs> so I was looking around up here at different, lots of different places. I wanted a small dog. <laughs> One thing I've wanted all along <laughs> was to have a lap dog. <laughs> Nessie was close. He was older, and he kind of liked the cuddles. Ginger loved the cuddles, but she grew too long. You know, we would still, I'd sit in the chair, she'd sit on the footrest with her chin on my knee. This one, he's my lap dog. Now, I looked all around up here, and, um, I'm sorry, this is a little bit longer. I'm sorry. But every place up here had bigger dogs. There were German Shepherds. There were Border Collies. There were um, Pits. All of these are fine. But they're not lap dogs. So I sent a message off to my sister. My sister and my sister-in-law. Saying, um, if you see any small dogs or puppies, please let me know. And they both they both said, you need to go to his hands extended sanctuary because they always have small dogs. And I got on there and that's where she had just posted a video of this one, the Maltese and two Chewinis in the yard and they were running and everything and now, the Maltese was, you know, taking charge, but this one was kept, every time anybody come close, she, he'd back off. 
And uh, I don't know. I just fell in love with him. So we gave him, we're giving him a good help with a kitty cat that he can bark at. He has to realize the kitty cat's probably going to scratch him sometime, but you know. Went to the doctor yesterday. Doctor cleaned out his ears, which he didn't like. And the doctor goes, you know, this one thinks he's cloth already. I said, well, yeah, in some ways he is. But in some ways he isn't. Then I come home today with yarn everywhere. Um, cleaned his ears out. He was already up to date on the shots. He's been fixed. Everything. So, yeah, this is... <laughs> Usually his eyes are open. This is my little boy. Casper the friendly dog. Anyways, I saved that for last because I knew I was going to be a mess. I can't talk about magic or Nessie without crying over them too. And they've all had such full lives that I know we can make a good home here. And, uh, his hands extended, called my vet, and asked, you know, what happened to Ginger, and they told her, and they told the lady that she needs a dog to kill the dog. Size hole of my heart. And he does. Besides which, he keeps me so busy, we're outside so many times a day, which I'm better now. When we got Ginger, it was either... January or February, snow, cold. And I said, I don't want to ever get another dog in the winter. Well, we've had, we've been blessed with nice weather, so we're getting the potty training done pretty well. I mean, when you're trapped in the house and you have to go, you know, he's going to go. He was supposed to be trapped in the kitchen where there was tile. He had other ideas. Now I think, I think we've got this figured out now. Anyways, I wanted to introduce you to Casper, my sleepy suit. He is not usually this still. This dog is so funny. I'll take, I'm sorry. I'll take him outside to do his bathroom thing. And you know he's going to drive the bus. First of all, he runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. Then he tinkles. I give him a doggy treat. He only gets one when he goes outside. And then he'll take the doggy treat and he'll run and run. Until he, it, sometimes he loses it, which is so comical. But sometimes it, he keeps most of it and he'll eat it. And then if he has to do the other, he goes, run, 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 again. And before you know, he's pottying. <laughs> so he gets another treat because both those things I like for him to do outside. So, yeah. And before long, we're going to try to do some training. He doesn't know what that means. Right now he thinks training means mommy, well, it is training. Mommy says no teeth because he's getting his adult teeth. And mommy says down because he, you know, my yarn that is in this room is up. And yeah. So he's learning. You know, he's a puppy. It's all right, baby. Mommy doesn't usually talk when he's asleep, because Mommy's usually asleep, too. Anyways, I'm hoping I can get back on a regular schedule. If not, it will be because Ronald is going through things. Okay? Um, yeah. He, he has, I mean, my brother-in-law came in from Connecticut over the weekend. And Ronald would come out and talk with the two boys. He never feels comfortable talking in front of me because I think he knows I can, he can't hear me if I say anything. So he doesn't like to talk in front of me, in front of me, I guess. So, um, but he'd come out and talk to the boys for a little bit, and that would wear him out. So he'd have to go back to bed. Um, we've been worried because he's not been eating very much. He might eat one meal a day. Well, yesterday then was a good day. He got up, he ate breakfast, and he ate a meal about 
today. He had a doctor's appointment early, which is why I don't know where Randy, what Randy did with him when he went to the doctor. <laughs> Anyways, um, and Randy, because we were very concerned, I suggested that he talk to our doctor and ask him how we know it's time for hospital. Because I was really afraid that he couldn't even move to go to the bathroom without going back breathless and barely making it back to bed. And uh, But then we had two great days. So. Anyway, so that's what's been going on in our life. Hopefully, if nothing bad happens with Brian, um, I'll be able to get back here next week. I won't guarantee Tuesday. But I will make it back here. A lot of it depends on when he lets me. <laughs> Anyways. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you get to do some crafting. <laughs> and I hope all your crafting is successful without any mistakes. But if there are mistakes, I hope they're little ones and easy to fix. I love you all. Big, big hug. Take care, and God bless. I'll see you later. Bye.